Hey man, here it is, bro. They say this is like God's country when you get to get on the field with America's team. Man, Oxnard, California, where they practice, baby. I'm excited. I'm gonna man, see what it's the team like got. heaven. This weather feels good. Nice little breeze. Got to be a good day for camp. Well, you know what? The only heaven for the Dallas Cowboys is if they can win it all, That's right? It. You got Brandon Cooks now. Stephon Gilmore is at it, and you still got double sticks rushing from the outside. Maybe we chat with him and see what he thinks about it. Let's see what he said. Let's have a day. He hurt. My feet always hurt. I've been there before. My feet always hurt. I was in the club barefooted before. What's up? <laughs> Cheat code. Ain't nobody going to fight man? you, so you can, take, you can keep your shoes off. I be seeing y'all all over now. That's how you know we almost famous, though. Y'all there. Nah, y'all there. It man. does feel good when you look back. You're like, man, we ain't here with damn Michael Parsons off a of podcast. Nah, man. RC's everywhere. Yeah. I see you. I Y'all too flash, but I see him everywhere. <laughs> RC working, man. I don't know how you balance it. I don't do it well. Man, because if I'm being I, honest, I, I be battling at home. And I'm like, man, I wonder how RC doing it because I feel like mine ain't as bad as his, and he just. <laughs> It is, not, it is not going well. You know, RC got 19 jobs. It's just so hard trying to balance home life, right, work right, life, right, and then right. your life. Right, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, first of all, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, family is always one, but you got to, everything else is secondary. Like, everything else is secondary. Oh, yeah. Nah, you know they, like, they good. They just need that. They want that, like, personal time that. Same way you put it in your work, same like yeah. at home. You know, when I'm with my boys, it's different. Because I be like, man, when I'm with my boys, they grown men. I ain't got to worry about them. Yeah. They do something silly, you know, I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to keep <laughs> pushing. Yeah. I, I know I ain't got to worry about them getting home. We might text each other, yo, y'all make it back safe, you in your room. Yeah. I said, well, my girl, I got to be way more alert. I got to see who watching, who, like, you know, I'm, you know, right. motherfuckers is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, honestly, though, Chance, <laughs> you have a comfortable aura, though. You know what I mean? Like, people are so used to seeing you happy and cool, so they feel like they can walk up on you. And two, that's kind of your responsibility. Like, you can't be a different dude then. Yeah, I they can't, can't be come up and meet you. Hey, how you right. doing? I'm Channy. Nice to be there. Right, you know what I'm saying? That's why now I be trying to look at the ground like a kid. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, Mike, I saw something today, bro, at practice that I've never seen before. You put Tyron Smith on his butt. Now that's the OG, you know what I mean? When you at this point now, you said last week, man, you tired of coming up short. You tired of being in a position where you feel like you can win it and not. Do you feel like this year can be the year that the Dallas Cowboys finally get over the hump? Yeah, just because the intent and the purpose. Like, I, I just feel like we so much more purposeful right now. Like, everything I'm doing has a purpose. Like, so I'm just so purposeful and how I'm getting better, um, the treatment I'm bringing in, the, you know, taking care of my body, just, and, you know, just being purposeful and trying to lead guys now. You know, I think I stepped into that role now, just willingly just saying, like, y'all got to come every day to outwork me. I told the guys in the room, I said, bro, I said, right now, at this point, we're leaving money on the table. Like I said, respectfully, I'm trying to beat the hell out of UD Law every day, UDA every day. Like, I don't even want that shit to be close. So respectively, my mindset is like, I need to dominate every day. Like I don't even, every breakdown is be great. Like I want that stuff to cycle. Like just reading, listening, just greatness is just like what I'm chasing. With that leadership role you talk about, like we done, we done talked to you a number of times, you've been on the show a number of times through the years, but now bro, I don't know, kissing your butt, but like you one of the best football players in the world. Mm -hmm. You right now is on the MVP list. You have odds to win the NFL MVP as a pass rusher. Being that good at ball, but then also having to be a leader and drag people along. I tell you, I play with great players that couldn't bring nobody with them. How hard is it, like you're saying, for you to be what you're going to do, you're going to do what you're going to do, but now you have to bring people along with you. Now, at this point, I'm kind of like calling people out on shit I used to do. Like, right. I'll be in meetings and not writing down. Now, every time you won't catch me in a meeting not writing something. Like, I'm trying to just grab something like that cute saying, so that way it's correlating out to the field. So when I see young guys, I'm like, yo, why are you right? Like, I see young guys like this, they just watching, like, because they think they don't got no meaning. But I said, bro, I done been on my rookie year, D-Law, Randy, and D-A. Our streets starting DNs went down, and they moved me from 
linebacker. Like, you just never know when your time is going to get called. So for me, it's like, I need everybody on this top level now. Like, we got one shot, bro. You don't, you don't get a Stephon Gilmore every year. Like, you don't get a Brandon Cooks every year. Like, you know, and the things I've been learning from them, bro, I just, they like top notch, heavy level. Like, right. we were talking to Trey earlier, RC and I, and he said, uh, your first training camp, Coach Al Harris told him, that guy right there is a Hall of Famer. What does it mean when you hear something like that? I mean, because Al was an amazing player himself, and he knows players. Yeah. Man, to hear stuff like that, bro, it, it make you feel good, but it just makes me feel like I got so much to do. Like, even when you get them comparisons to, like, LT and stuff, it's just like, bro, like, those is cool, and they kind of make you feel good inside. Like, but I feel like those is, like, the devil whispers, bro. That's like him saying, like, yo, it's all right, like, you good where you at right now. Like, why don't you ever just want to be greater than where you at right now? Like, I feel like some, sometimes good stuff is bad, like, intent sometimes, bro. I don't know what it is, but, like, every time I hear I feel good, but then I feel like it makes me think, like, how much can I get better than this right now? Like, if he's saying that right now and I'm not even, like, tipping my skill, what can he say, like, you know, 10 years from now? He's, like, he's the best to ever do it. Like, I, you know, Hall of Fame's a great bunch. But you get a different level of meeting when they say you one of the best ever. You know, when people say Aaron Donald's the best ever, like he's automatically in the Hall of Fame, like there's no doubt. But people say he's the best defensive player ever. Like when they talk about LT, like that's what I'm saying, when you're a part of somebody and you are somebody, I feel like mm -hmm. that's the difference. Like guys get into the Hall of Fame, but like when you're the best in the Hall of Fame, your name always rings bell. Like no matter how, like LT's been gone for what, 20 plus years? His name More still than. rings two decades from now. Like, that's crazy. So, like, you know, when my decade's up, like, I need to be ringing in 2050. My son need to be coming through, like, ah, you got your dad. Like, your dad was the best to ever do it. Like, yep. So, to me, that's the dope stuff. I can't speak on it from experience because that's not my trajectory. It wasn't Hall of Fame. But you talk to Hall of Fame players, and they'll tell you there's different halls. Yeah. You know, there is, like, a certain level that goes to how people perceive you. Exactly. And that is true. It's the guys that have the gold jacket, and all of those are great football players. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Jerry Rices, and there's gonna be the Tom Brady's and the Joe mm -hmm. Montana's that when people, the Barry Sanders, when people speak their names, it's a different level of respect, especially amongst people that know what happened. Yeah, it's a, it's a different choice. So I try not to like feed into it too much. Like I almost convince myself that I'm angry so much every day. You know, but in being angry, that brings me to walking off the field in San Francisco last mm -hmm. year. There's a opportunity for you guys. You just come off of beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that was the first game in the wild that like offense and defense dominated. You're headed into San Francisco, a team that took you out the year before mm -hmm. at the start at AT&T. And so now you got this opportunity and the defense plays well. You're not able to score enough points. Defense doesn't make the plays in the red zone that keeps them out and you lose. What was your feeling walking off of the field last year? Man, to be honest with you, it ain't really hit me till we hit the locker room. The thing that people don't realize, like, that team will never be the same again. Like, them same guys, same coaches, it'll never be the same again. And, like, I was so devastated realizing, like, I ain't never talked or hugged some of them people that, you know, I left that, that locker room with ever again. Like, once we broke out of meetings, I never talked to George Evers again. I never got to say to him how much I appreciate you from, for molding me and helping me as a play, young player and staying on me. Like, I never got to say thank you to the people across the room who helped me and gave me advice. Like, and you know that that feeling right there crushes you, bro. Like, there's no feeling like, let, like feeling like you let people down, and that regret too. I think about all the plays I ain't missed. Like. Every play, they're like there's certain plays I think about that I'm like, man, I wish I would have just did this. Like, I know that was my job, that was my duty. Like, and you know, you live with that for so long. If you're really a competitor, like everyone's not built like that. But me, like, that stuff weighs on me, bro. It's like a little heart attack. How much of that feeling dictated how you approach the off season to get ready for this year? All of it, bro. All the disrespect. Bro, I bookmark everything everyone said, bro. And I just saved it all. I just said, you know what? This how they say it? Bet. Like, like, dude had audacity say, these teams are the best teams in the NFC. I said, what make them the best team? We the best team in the NFC. Like, how dare you say 
This team in front of me said this team the best. No, we're the best in the MC. The approach, the mindset is how I'm taking it. I'm the, if I want to be the best, I'm the best every day. I can't be the best on Monday, not on Tuesday. So every day I tell four, I say, yo, I'm coming for you. Every day I'm competing for you. It's not, it's not nothing personal. Like, I feel like I got to be greater than you every day. If you what they leave for and talking to MJ, I was watching MJ's documentary. He said, I wanted to see who the leader on the court was. He said, I went straight at him. So every day, four, I'm coming at you, you the leader, I gotta attack you, because that's gonna make everyone else like, oh Ten. shit, Mike is balling today. Ten in their third down period, three plays in a row, he disrupted the play. Two outside, one on an ET stunt up in the inside, yeah. sack, sack, sack. I can vouch for it, so that's how yeah. you attack it. It's getting to the point, like the coach said, yo, we coming to chip you, come at me today, come on. I need that, I need that to get better. Come at me, I need every, everything that I wanna see, that I potentially gonna see, send it. That's what I need to see. That's going to get me ready for the year. Yeah, and I've heard you say that, and I read some article. You said we're the best team in the NFC. Yeah. No matter what y'all say. And I respect it, but the question, the follow-up to that would be, why? Because you weren't last year. What, what makes this year different than last year where now you're the best team in the NFC? People don't understand. Experience is a gift. I even told RC this Super Bowl time. I said the Eagles is the most talented team, but I'll never go against experience. So I'll go with Mahomes. I'll never say Mahomes is going to lose. I remember I told you that. And no, everyone said, you really going against the Eagles? I said, bro, I'm not, I hope the Eagles win. I don't care, you know, I got great friends on the Eagles. But I said, I'll never go against experience because experience is a gift. And that's one thing we have. This is a team that played together. Our defense didn't break up. Our defense is still the same defense. And we only got better and learned how to communicate better. We learned how to, you know, play together better. We understand what we like. We got people that's interchangeable. I'm coming off the ball. Layton's coming on the ball. like. Everyone is learning a new role and how to fixate to become a better one. Uh -huh. So like, it's okay, like you could bring guys in, but guys don't know how to work with each other all the way right now. It's like building a new, drafting a wide receiver, you gotta build chemistry with the quarterback. Know where you want the ball, where the ball's being thrown. Like, you know, same thing with rushing. Rushing is a gift, bro. Like, you don't just hop on the field and just sack the quarterback. You gotta learn how to rush with the team, everyone around you. Like this ain't one-on-one, -on -one. it's not one-on-one -on -one sport. Well, Mike, uh, first of all, you're a liar because I was talking to the Joneses and you didn't rush at Penn State. You talk about rushing, you don't just come out and get sacks. That's actually a lie because it's exactly what you did. <laughs> you, you, you talked about all the people that went down and they said, yeah. oh, let's see if number 11 can rush. Yeah. And now it's become your permanent position and a reason yeah. why you're up for the MVP. So say other people don't just line up and rush and get <laughs> sacks, but you did. I have a question for you though, along those lines of you saying, that you guys are the best team, and it is about experience in the best team in the NFC. Many people, including me, would say, y'all can't say that y'all the best team in the NFC East. As much as you just talked about the Kansas City Chiefs beating the Philadelphia Eagles, the truth is the Philadelphia Eagles represented the NFC in the Super Bowl. The truth yeah. is Jalen Hurts got that experience up against Patrick Mahomes, that that team, shoot, you was pissed off when Jalen Carter fell to the yeah. Philadelphia Eagles. So what says that the Dallas Cowboys, now more experienced, can just beat the Philadelphia Eagles? Why should anybody even pick y'all in your own division? That's what football is for. That's what the pads is for. The pads talk. I can say all we want. That's what football is for. I could just show you better I could tell you. That's what my mom told me when I was growing up. You're not wrong. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you another, another man is better than me. He got to see me twice a year, plus playoffs. So what that tell you? I tell them we're gonna see it happen on the grass. Exactly. And then we're gonna come back to it. I'm like, bro, I told you, who the best? People go to the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl and they don't make it for another four years. That don't, you know what I'm saying? Some people, egos, there's a lot of egos in football. That's one thing I realized this year ain't no egos, bro. Like, I don't think I'm better than the next man, but I can outwork you. Well, you are better than most of the next men. I'm gonna tell yeah. you, because it's my job. But when you look at what you guys have assembled defensively and talking to DQ, Joe Witt, you know, you mentioned Stephon Gilmore. You add him outside or opposite Trayvon Diggs. I think Deron Bland can be a star, Pooper. Pooper. right? Then you look at the three-headed monsters that you guys have at safeties. You add Mozzie. I picked in the offseason, they asked me who would I think could be the number one defense in the NFL. And I said that it could be this team. What are your goals, though, defensively this year? Because you go back to last year, there's a play, and Trayvon gets $100 million. There's a play. Trayvon, who doesn't drop footballs, has an opportunity to get one. 
when you look at some of the things that you guys missed last year, what are some of the goals you're setting individually and for your team defensively? I'm trying to be on that Ray Lewis defense. I'm trying to hold teams to under 10 points. They don't score 10 points, we win the game. So I take accountability. Adversity happens, you know, that's part of the game. But we got whole teams under 10 points. I ain't worried about, I can't, see, media high side, we call it, say, oh, well, the offense didn't score. That's why we lost, but well, we let them score 19 points. Where's our accountability? Regardless of how good we played, but we didn't play great. I think there was another level that we could have tapped in. We missed interceptions. We missed opportunities to get the ball back to our offense. And something they probably could have capitalized on. So I don't, I don't blame nobody. I blame ourselves, and that's something that, you know, I think the discipline factor is, I think guys are way more disciplined and precise and attentful this year. Like, I can just feel it. And it starts with the guys. Like, for example, D-Law never wanted to play left, but because I played both, he's like, yo, let me work right at practice today. Let me learn how to build these habits so that way we can scheme up. Like, no one is worried about I no more. It's about how can the boat go faster? You know, if one person's rowing a boat, it'll go slow as hell. But if we got four people that's trying to row this boat, it's gonna go right in the direction we want, fast. Do you get any pushback? Cause you're real outspoken. And it seems like year to year, like you, you get more comfortable, you becoming the face of the organization. But bro, you're the face of America's team. When they think about it, you bring up four. You look at the offensive side, it's four. Look on this side, it's you. Is that comfort level there? And is any pushback from any veterans? Or they just know Michael gonna, Michael gonna do him. But one thing you do, like RC said, you show up on the field. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know who could argue with you about it, but any yeah. kind of pushback on your personality nah. being seen by the world? Nah, no one pushed back. They might clown me and say, man, why you doing that? I was like, bro, I, I'm just not like one of y'all. Like, I feel like I'm an amazing opportunity. I've been blessed with so much. And uh, I just don't confuse purpose and passion. Mm. Like people think football, your purpose is all you should be about. And you know, that's cool, but I believe in passion. Like football is my passion, not my purpose. So I believe, you know, I should be doing other things. I should be trying other things, seeing where I want to go after football. You know, football is only for a small part of my life. And uh, some guys is, you know, they focus and they want to stay here, which is okay, but I still think you got the same focus and navigate to other things and other, uh, other outcomes. Aside from racing wide receivers doing workout, this offseason, what else did you do to put yourself in position to have your best season ever? I learned how to fight. <laughs> what? what? Man, I was getting into that ring, man. Oh, so you was boxing? Yeah. Just straight boxing? Yeah, like, I, yeah, I knew how to wrestle already, but I, I wanted to learn how to fight. Why was that important? I wanted to be so good at close combat. I was so tired of not keeping my hands up, letting people hit me in my face. It's one thing to have skill, but when you master skill and you kind of you torque it and you tweak it a little bit and put in like precise skill, it makes a huge difference. Like my hands this year, like from the first day, Q was like, bro, your hands is like so much, like 10 times better than last year. And that's just because I worked at them like Was that lot. something you noticed or was it something that your coaches studied over the course of the season and went back and said, Mike? Something I noticed. Okay. So like everything, like me hanging out with Andrew Whitworth, like that was me. Like I hit up Andrew was like, please, come work with me. I need to find out what I can do to get better. And I found out what I can do to get better. I want to know my weakness. Like, most people don't do that. Like, I don't think you should just train football every day. I think that's the worst thing you can do. What were some of those things that Andrew shared with you other than the, the hand piece, or was that the key? The hands was the key, but also being, like, he was like, your best reps was you was attacking. He was like, when you're unsure, that's when you make these guys get comfortable again. He was like, honestly, we love when you do your little, because he was like, most the good ones, we're just going to play basketball with you. I'm going to just mirror you. He was like, now, if you attack them and make them get all comfortable, make them show their hips, make them do that, now you playing football. And I feel like that's been a huge difference. Like, everything I'm doing, I'm attacking. Like, I'm not even thinking. I know where I want to be. If you're in my way, I'm throwing you by. I'm running by. I'm going through you if you don't give me them hands. Like. Everything is attacking, attacking, attacking. Like, I'm not letting nothing out the gas. And I've just put my conditioning to that too. Like, I was like, bruh, you gotta give me four quarters. If you're not ready for four quarters or overtime, it's gonna be a long day for you. Your life has changed dramatically. You know, you wore a, a first round pick at, at 15. Obviously now I'm sure people are kicking themselves 
that they let you get to that point, but you come to America's team. You have become, to me, not just the face of the defense, you're the face of the team when it talks about success at a position. It's also America's team. What has your personal life been like? How has that changed? You asked me before the show about balance yeah. and raising a family and, and having family to take care of. How have you learned to balance those things of being a superstar on America's yeah. team, but also being responsible for other people? I struggle with it. I really do. And I think so narrowly, like, my life has always been like, man, I got to make it to this. I got to do this. I, and I just lock in on it. I just, that's all I think about. And that's all I see. So I do, think about it, you know, when you when you try and get ready and you feel like this is what you got to do and you learning, like, you feel like, man, I'm right here. But then, like, in another lane, you got your family that you got to take care of. And, you know, once my daughter was born and, you know, I had to think about her and obviously my girl, I was like, man, like, <laughs> I was like, hold up. <laughs> and I realized like how hard like trying to do a relationship was. Like when you working out from six a when you going to work out at six AM and then you finish around let's say nine thirty ten, then you gotta go to the grocery store. And then you gotta cook. You eat down with the family. Then you like, man, at this point you tired, you like, man, let me just kick my feet up, play the game. No, no, no. Now I need my time. You done had your like I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You tell me I get no time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your time at work. I oh, know that. <laughs> and, and it really threw me off at first. And then, like, the hardest part is, you know, what I think was trying to see where you're coming from and then also seeing where I'm coming from and just trying to find a medium. So now I done told her, I said, listen, you got you got days. <laughs> Monday? We locked in, we watch whatever show, do whatever you want. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, once I get in my week and I gotta go to sleep, that's it. I need my days, like, I got this, I got this, I got this. And you know, then trying to balance, you know, leaving a lot, traveling, coming back home saying, hey, like we should do something like this. Like, you know, it's, it's tough. But you know, I think uh, if you care enough, you gotta find a way. That's just life. How does superstardom feel to you because because you are yeah. you know it's we play a game in the helmet and now social media has allowed some of that to change where people know your face and people can see you and also current players now do much more media than we used to when we play but not being able to walk around without taking pictures or being asked to sign an autograph and we try, at least I did, I tried to see that as a blessing because I was like, man, imagine all the people that toil away at jobs and no one ever cares, mm -hmm. right? Like people really care about your job, but that comes with criticism as well. Now that you get that from both sides, like if Michael Parson plays a game and doesn't get a sack, you've actually wasted a day to people. Yeah. And they're gonna tell you about that. How have you become accustomed to that and adjust it to the world that everybody wants to know what you're doing at all times. Actually, like Chad said, they care about what you eat. Yeah, uh, it makes me so uncomfortable, man. <laughs> I don't think I realized the level of superstardom that I reached. Like, I don't think like it really connect, cause that's not the type of dude I am. Like, I'm not a bougie dude. We want to kick back, throw spades, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm real homegrown, small city, like. So to me, stuff really don't really hit me the same as others. Like. I don't move around like I'm a superstar. Right. Like people see me walking in the street, they be like, bro, like no lie. I went back home and I'm sick. Our farmer's market got burned down, but I was in the farmer's market and it was hot. Like it's hot in the farmer's market. The AC don't work, but the food is delicious. Like, and I'm just sitting down with my family. This lady goes, there's, there's no way you're Michael Parsons. I was like, well, why? She was like, Cause no, no, no guy like Michael Parsons would be sitting down in this hot supermarket. And I was like, you right, he crazy, huh? And she's like, hell yeah, so no way. And she just walked away. I was like, bro, like, is it, am I tripping or is she tripping? Like, and I be really having to self reflect that some people really see me like this way, but, and to me, I'm like, what make me any different from you from sitting in the smart farmer's market? Like we nothing, the, like there's nothing different. You work the same way I work, you know? And I think, that's how most people should approach it. Like, I walk down streets, no security, no nothing. Like, you know, I don't 
think I should move any different than any other human. Like, that's just me. Now, I know some dudes, they feel like they got to have security. They got to make them feel like they're important. But to me, I only value my own opinion. I, I know I'm important to myself and my family. And I, that's all that matters to me. Anybody else, we all the same. I love the laid back. I love acting like you ain't you ain't who you are, but you got to pay mama's Netflix now. No. <laughs> Cut, bruh. What, what, what's going on with the Netflix bill at the crib? Man, bro, I take care of my mom. It's like, <laughs> she, my mom done hit me for some money, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but the Netflix is too far? Yeah, she she got to pay something. So I, I, tell, I tell everybody who at the crib, like, you got to add something. I don't care what you add, but you got to add something. So if you watch the TV, you pay for this TV. The, I, I bought the TV. Yeah. So <laughs> when we watch the TV. You paying for what's on this TV? Yeah. So everybody got to throw something in. Got to be some type of restitution. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't do nothing. When you come home from work, you ain't trying to hear it. <laughs> ain't nothing on TV. That TV should be set up. You feel me? Figure it out. Yeah. Even, but after this, because we know right now there's some negotiations going on. Nobody need to worry about no Netflix after this. But no, nah. with, the, with that negotiation, though, are you worried about it? Are you a dude that cares about the, the money, cares about the contract stuff, or you just play ball come. and let the I'm going to play ball. All that's going to come. I'm going to play ball. People be forgetting, like, why we started the game. Like, what? You wasn't thinking about no million-dollar contracts at five. You wasn't. You, when you started, though, Chan, because you started thinking about it. When they started paying me. <laughs> yeah. And I can't say when that was. It was in college. <laughs> But uh, once the money started coming, then I was I was really just better. Yeah. I was a prize fighter. Like right now, I feel like I've been very good with my money. I'm comfortable, bro. I got my crib. I got my family. Like that's all I could ever wanted. Like I moved around as a lot as a kid. But once I got my crib, oh, bro, that, I'm not really a car person. I'm not really a jewelry person. You know, I rock my GLD. I'm good. Like uh, you know, like I'm not type, like I'm not feeling for it. Like, but you want to be compensated and respected like those others out there. To be compensated, yes, you want to be compensated for your work, but I want to be feared by this, respected by this. Like, I'm not thinking about oh, this game check. That's what I'm looking for right at the game. Like, no, 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 I'm looking to dominate you today. Yeah. Like, if we doing it, why not do it at 100? Like, you're not playing for the check. Like, like, and then once people get the check, they fall off. I couldn't do that. No way. No. I, I'm, my competitor is too high for me to be like that, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I play the game because I love it. Like, if I ain't love the game, like, there's no money in the world that could keep me playing. Like, David Mulligetta hates me. And he tells me I shouldn't say this stuff out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, when I hit this age, I won't tell you the age. I said, Dave, I'm leaving the game. Man. He said, well, what did they, Dave, I'm leaving. Man. Like, he hates, he's like, bro, they could offer you this. It's not about the money, bro. It's about, like, what's next for me? You could lead the NFL in sacks one year and not play the following season. I, to your competitiveness, I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe you could be the best rusher in the world and just stop. You can't yeah. do it. You're going to want to keep proving to people that you're the best. Nah. Because <laughs> I want to be the best at other things. That's what I said. I can't confuse purpose and passion. Mm. Once it, football is only going to get me to, like, just it's gonna be it's gonna be an end road. Yeah. You know, Fred, you think like you don't RC y'all like don't y'all all wish I like eventually like it's gonna end, right? Yeah. And like what you said, we just said you doing you got 17 different jobs and you striving to be the best. Well I'm trying to be like you, RC. Like I'm trying to be in the same seat you in. And you know, once I make a name and I got my name notched into that Cleveland, man. Is it Ken? Ken? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm out of here. Are you familiar with Barry Sanders? Yeah, I know Barry. He went out on top. And a lot of people still trying to figure out why. Yeah. I think it would be the same if Michael Parsons left on top of his game. And going back, I know I said it. I'm not sure about these guys. I said I wanted to play to a certain age. Mm -hmm. Then I get there, and then I wanted more. Then I want more. It's not even about that no more. It's not even about the football no more. I don't even want more. I just want enough. You know, Marcus Freeman, coach of Notre Dame, talked about a work-life blend, right? He said that it can't be balanced. And I don't know if I've convinced myself of this because I've continuously poured into purposes and passions or whatever it was, or just jobs that I felt like in order to create extraordinary levels of success, 
You can't have an ordinary schedule. Okay. I can't do this job that is so different from what quote unquote civilians do and do it from eight to five. I just don't feel like that's, that's a possibility. And that does take a toll, though, like in order to be the best at everything. And we had this conversation on our uh, Midnight in Los Angeles uh, episode. And I said, man, I was just like, I don't I was like, I don't know, like how to not pour everything in to it all. But eventually you start to realize you look at those cups and you like that one's full and that one's full. There's only half in there. It's impossible to be the best at everything. It truly yeah. is. Yeah. And so you have to have that blend. But you start talking about like, what's the next step? your next step is going to take care of itself, whatever it is. Because when you sit here and you speak, the first thing I see is he's so much more than a pass rusher. Yeah. He's so much more than a football player. All of those things will come. But in truth, Micah, as great as you are at like other stuff, you ain't better at nothing than you are at this. And the way that people are going to pay you to do this is differently than they're going to ever pay you to do anything else. And you're, you're right though, like it's enough. I played with a guy, Aaron Smith, and he could have got more money leaving Pittsburgh. And he's like, RC, I forget, he's from like Idaho or something. And he said, how much money, how much money I need to be all right? He's like, I got more than that. But with that, and Fred mentioning Barry Sanders, you know what the difference about Barry Sanders' career and your career? Barry Sanders played for a horrible team in Detroit that nobody cared about. And he was the greatest to ever do it. You got a chance to be the greatest to ever do it on America's team. All that other stuff that you want and covet is going to come because of how you do this here. When you think about things outside of your individual play, how badly do you want the championship though? How much does that weigh into your decision of when you could walk away from doing this? It weighs a lot. That's why I want it early. I want it early. That's why I say, bro, if I win this Super Bowl, I never got to worry about anything ever in my life. It's different, bro. The names that hold so much weight in Dallas, like, kill, like it It really blows my mind how much Michael Irvin still is a legend in Dallas. Like, he walks the streets as, like, a god. Like, I've never seen it like that, like, ever. Like, I want it early, bro. It, I need a bad. Like, I visualize, like, I'm tired of watching Super Bowls and sweets. Like, <laughs> I tell you that right now. Like, like it's cool being with the little Celeste and being Dick Dove and seeing Brown and seeing Kevin Hart and stuff. Man, ask them. What y'all mean? <laughs> mean now? Boom, man. I want me the one they clap before. Like, that's the visualization. Like, that's why I think it's okay to go to that stuff. Like, people so prideful, they like, man, I ain't going to that Super Bowl. Like, nah, man. I watch them. I watch them every time. I, like, you gotta, like, I, egos is so big now with some players, bro. It's bad. I'm not, like, I'm visualizing that parade. Like, you gotta cipher something. Like, pictures is one thing, but when you in person, you're like, bro, I can't wait till I, I'm with my family. I watch all the families. I see the smiles. Like, I wait to see the MVPs. Man, I can't wait for mine. Yeah. I only been here two years. I'm tired of watching. <laughs> you might be the most impatient human that's, 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 ever, that's ever lived. Because I feel like each year I've been here, I had a team that was capable. Like, I didn't walk into a bad organization with bad talent. Each year I've had a team that I felt like my first year, we lost to 49ers because we were undisciplined. We had so many penalties. Offsides, and then we was about to get the ball back, we got a defensive holding on the D-lineman. Like, that's non-football. That's not football related. Missed our opportunities last year with the drop picks and stuff. Like, I don't even blame the offense, bro. Like, self-reflection. People don't want to do that. Like, it's so easy to blame. Like, what did I do? Man, first of all, thank you for taking yeah. the time. You are legit family and we appreciate you. Nah, I always got y'all. Yeah, we appreciate you more than you know. I'm sure that they would agree. Since we've had an opportunity to speak to you in this way multiple times, You've grown so much since the first time we spoke as a man. As a player, we obviously see it on the field and listening to you as a leader. I don't know how to predict what this year looks like or the rest of it, but I do know, man, like the way you see it, to me, is the way that you're supposed to. 
Hey, man, we wish you all the best, bro. We always rooting for you. ARC, I got to tell all my homies. I was like, man, if there was a day to hit sports book, hit that thing today. Unanimous, baby. And I'm not saying that for like. Defensive player of the year, you said? Yes, everything. Everything. Defensive player of the year. Like pros, like Super Bowl, the whole nine, like Mahomes. So you think defensive player of the year, MVP? Yeah. Defensive player of the year, MVP, Super Bowl champion, Michael Parsons, is what we will be saying at this time now, in MV, MVP might be a stretch. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got I to get a little more realistic. <laughs> I'm going to go get you 20 But I'm saying top three player in the league, top one player in the league, I don't know what it's going to be, but my work, the work, the preciseness, the dedication, everything to get there has to happen. Like one thing about God, bro, and that's one thing I got closer with, the faith, speaking to him, is gonna happen at the right time. He gonna make it happen. Right. I just gotta keep following my faith, bro. I know it's gonna happen. He tell me all the time it's gonna happen. I believe it, because I, everything I say, nobody thought I'd be a cowboy, but guess who said that, Joe, before he even happened? I said it. Now, I didn't say it. Pre-draft, I was with NFL Films. They got, I'm gonna be, I was like, bro, I'm gonna get drafted to the Cowboys. I said that in September of the year before, I was like, yo, action. I was like, yo, I'm gonna get drafted to the Cowboys. They was arguing, like, bro, you're not gonna, I'm going to the Cowboys. Everything I say is gonna happen, because I believe it, I visualized it already. Yeah. I had to lose to understand. I had to, like, you know, I had to lose to get that, though. I had to lose, I had to fail. And now that I know what failure felt like, my work and my mindset, everything has changed because I failed. Watching the Super Bowl doesn't piss you off? I didn't earn it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I had a pastor say one time, you ever see a, bad, a, bad, a real bad dude get all the good stuff happen to him? Mm -hmm. That one dude who just never work out, never do anything, but he come in, he get a pick, or that one dude <laughs> who don't got no job, not doing nothing with his life and get the baddest girl. You're like, man, how does this dude get anything, bro? <laughs> and then that dude that do everything right, just never, he just don't get his blessing. But it's not like supposed to happen like that. Yeah. Like you can't predict that type of stuff. But listen, you just gotta keep following your faith. Cause that dude who's doing everything right, it's gonna happen when God wants it to happen at the right time. But you gotta experience losing and be like, nah, I just gotta get a little bit wiser. Like, gotta get a little stronger. You know, kid faith gotta get a little bit stronger. One one on the way out for me, bro, because I get criticized a lot for it, but I feel this way, man. I know mm -hmm. Foe's your boy. You talk about him, you always praise him. I see the number of times you brought him up a number of times mm -hmm. in this interview. Why is Fo that guy? Because I don't see that in him going to get that ring. I see the dog. I do see it. Hey, everybody do today opinion, bro. Yeah. There's people I didn't believe in. There's people I ain't want to get paid that got paid. <laughs> you feel me? Shit. <laughs> it just happened like that. Man, F chair today. <laughs> 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 Hey, Chad, today. Hey, you ain't with the boat? Yeah. Hey, bro, the one thing about the boat going faster, you gotta believe in everybody, bro. Yeah. Hey, it ain't my job to, you know, worry about what the next man doing. But all I can do is say, I got you, foe. Yeah. I can't do nothing and say, I got you. Yeah. If you ain't scoring, don't worry about it. It's my job to get stops. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing about football people don't realize. Everybody got a job. Everybody not gonna get the job done every week. It's impossible. There's games I go no sacks. There's games I go for two sacks. Like, but hey, some people just got really good game plans. Yeah. This is the best players in the world, bro. The one percenters. Everything ain't easy. But guess what? Dak's a one percenter. He's making one percent money in the world. Yeah. So if you don't believe in him, he already believed in himself. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> What you gonna do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna see. Center. We gonna hey, see. I, I think he's making like 0.5% money in the world. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, it don't take much to make 1%, but. Hey. You say it don't uh, take Mike much. About go, Mike about to go get him. Uh, on average? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Man. All up, bro. I know it, I yeah, know it. Big old dude, boy. Yeah. Appreciate you. It's like you don't got bigger or some shit. Mike. I got leaned up. Yeah. There go your boy. Hey, fo, fo, fo. Yes. Yeah, sir, man. You good? What's up, man? Big dog. You looking good? All right, man. Okay. They say they coming for you. Hey, that not what I heard. That not what Joe Witt said. That ain't what Joe Witt said. <laughs>
Good brother. Good to see you. Good Thank you guys you. so much. For enjoy you. Man. Really enjoy appreciate it. Enjoy watching you. Coach, I just want to say hello. Thank you. Thank you guys for allowing us to come out there. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Mr. Jones, good to see you. Thank you so much for letting us come out. Good to see you. you here. Good to be here. Nah, good to be here. Dak told me that the defense might need some help today. That's the word on the street. That's what he told me coming out. I'm going to tell you what. The best thing you can do for us is make us a list from your perspective. <laughs> of where we need to come up on. Well, I'm going to tell you what y'all don't need. Y'all don't need any more D linemen. <laughs> that pass rush is going to be crazy. Great depth there. And yeah. we're proud of that Nas. We, uh, it's a great pick. He's got a chance to. It's a great His quicks have impressed me. Just how quick you think of him and they're controlling the gap. Well, oh, goodness, he's quick. Yeah, the record button. Yeah. You like being out here, like coming out this way to do it? Yeah. Any, any of the young cats look good? Um, I like, I like 37. 37? I like um, 25. I feel like it's all about repetition. Like, mm -hmm. the more reps you get, like, once you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. True. Like, I remember when I first got here, I was like, I just need reps. reps and I to get it. Right. Like, I remember in college, like, when I switched over, it was just I needed reps, mm -hmm. and then I just got used to it. It came easy. Mm -hmm. That's why I would be just reps. But out here, you get just limited. You get limited reps because mm -hmm. you got like, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people though. You're Ninety right. deep, you know what I'm saying? Going back. Ah, okay. oh, stay up. Stay up. It's Mike. Y'all got some receivers, bro. Yeah. Looking yeah. Nice. Yeah, you got some receivers. He's so fast. So fast though. That's what I was saying though. When you low 4-3 and you run high 4-3, that's still fast as hell now. Yeah. I really like him. What's that? Well, I thought that was 20. Oh, that is, yeah. Pollard. Tyler, I like him, bro. He got juice. You tell you, I ain't he got juice. He was dog. that big, man. Yeah, he yeah. nice size. He got too, a good but... size on him, for sure. Yeah, he got juice, dog. I was like, okay, it makes sense now. Mm -hmm. how, how he was able to get get through that, his, his yeah. burst, but that burst is what you need. Once you see it, you got to get missing. Hit it. He, yeah. he gets missing. <laughs> yeah. He gets missing, And dog. he break tackles, yeah. and I see it. Because now, now you see he's now. bigger, yeah. Yep. Because his lower body. Yeah. Got yep. some nice calves and thighs big. You know how it is, though. When a cat can run, it must have your whole, the whole way you think about play calling, though. He come off the line pushing out the gate. We think a deep ball. You sit it down. I'm, I'm here. I know Tyreek's so dangerous. Yeah. Like he's dangerous. But you know, I've been trying to explain to people the difference for us. Like, I was okay with cats that had long speed. Mm -hmm. It's the boys that can start right now. Yeah. Because they get up on you. Yep. You, stop yeah. Them. Yeah, they get up on you. Reaccelerate. Yeah, well, get well, back well, to it. I'm saying, like, they break your cushion down so fast mm -hmm. and you start thinking about running. And so now when they sit it down, ta -ta. Right. it's hard, yeah. man. Right. That uh, Tana? Tana was like that. Santana. <laughs> Tana was like that. You know who's going to. Here we go. Two drops. I thought you were going to have a great year. Really? Oh, it'll go crazy. Like, it'll go crazy. He looks so fresh. <laughs> he'll go a year off? I'm talking about Cal, really? <laughs> Thank God for that, there. Atlanta. <laughs> nah, we, I've been seeing the practice. I get some of the footage from him. Oh, my God. It's crazy. <laughs> he said he just won his name back. The other thing is this they just want his name back. Stop playing with his name. He can run, but his routes, though? It's amazing. He top three routes. Yeah. But you know, I, I tell people all the time. People realize what he does after the catch, too. Yeah. yeah. He gets missing, y'all. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. That's the, he runs route like boys from Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they all do all that footwork stuff and all. They got stems, leverage, mm -hmm. all that. Like, he make everything look like he going deep. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up, man? How you feeling? Good. Your good. body good? You look good? good. good. Taking it easy? Taking it easy. Yeah. 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 Tearing them up, man. We, uh, yeah. How's Shadi? The best. The That's best. my guy, the man. Best, man. The best. He, he's just always in the head. Good shit for uh -huh. me. Reminder, players, uh -huh. people. He, I love Shadi. For, for sure. We'll catch up, brother. All right. What's good luck up? this year. I see now why they call it America's team. Yeah. yeah. It was out there, man, Micah. We talked to our boy. He feels confident. I'm a little skeptical, but we're going to see when it starts up. You're a little skeptical. I, I, I got to admit, I'm a little jealous at times of the Cowboys fan, but they actually run a great camp. This was, this was amazing. 
I mean, it was amazing, but it all comes down to whether or not this team can win their first Super Bowl in 27 years. Double Sticks says they can, and like he said, he speaks it all into existence. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up.